Dova from Australia knocking down the three, and it's a two-point Gonzaga lead. Terry Gannon, Stephen Bardo with you as the number 14 team in the nation. Gonzaga's on the road. It's been a great match. This is not an easy place to play. It's always loud, Stephen. It's raucous, but especially when the Zags come to town. Well, the Zags are the cream of the crop here. And anytime St. Mary's gets a knock, chance to knock the big dog off the block, they take it. The Zags out to an early lead, but St. Mary's coming right back, and it's a two-point game at this point. Glad to have you with us. They're always crazy behind us here whenever <laughs> we come to Moraga, and it seems like we meet here every year this time of year with the conference schedule just underway, and we're talking, can Gonzaga repeat as the regular season champ, and can St. Mary's make a run and knock them off? We're doing it again. Yeah, we're doing it again. 14th in the country is Gonzaga with that terrific non-conference schedule, yeah. but St. Mary's is critical, Terry, unlike a lot of conferences, for St. Mary's to get one of these victories against Gonzaga in the minds of people around the country for an NCAA bid. So it's very early in conference play, but this is a critical game for the Gales. They did it a couple years ago. Couldn't get him here last year, even though it was a close game. Early on in the West Coast Conference, it's again the Zags with a bullseye on their backs. The number 14 in the nation, a murderous non-conference schedule. The Gales have reloaded. Diamond Simpson gone, Patty Mills gone, but guess what? They're 15 and two and they're rolling. In Portland, maybe the team around the country that people don't know about, but the Pilots have a couple of big non-conference wins to their credit already and took Gonzaga right down to the wire in the matchup just the other night. So it's not just a two-team league this year. I think Portland will be in the mix. Much like St. Mary's, most of their guys can shoot it and shoot it beyond the arc. Well, Gonzaga felt that the other night going into yeah. Portland and, and struggling there, but came out with a victory. Portland has some very good non-conference wins as well, Terry. So this is a team that is capable, but like St. Mary's, has to get some big wins and has to try to knock off Gonzaga in the eyes of people around the country. The beat goes on. That's the storyline every year That's in the it. conference. How about our star watch tonight? Matt Bolden, one of the best, not only out west, but in the country. And Omar Samhan, who leads the WCC in both points per game and rebounds per game. Well, Omar Samhan is, is a, a terrific example of hard work throughout his career. And Matt Bolden may be as skilled of a point guard as we can see around the country. So Thursday night showcase presented by T-Rail Price, underway and rolling, all part of our conference conference tip-off, which uh, and we get into conference season, and it, it is a different mindset. You don't get a break. You don't get a chance to catch your breath. It's night in, night out. Yeah, and, and they go back and forth. And when you look at a Gonzaga ball club that, as you mentioned, Terry, has won nine straight conference titles, they get everyone's best shot, whether they're on national TV or not. They can go to San Francisco. They can go to Pepperdine. They're going to get their best shot every game. Bo Kong, a sophomore originally from Sudan by way of Canada, now on the floor for Mark Few. Will Foster, seven foot five, in there. And you, you would expect to see a lot of him tonight, especially on the defensive end, matching up with Omar Samhan. Yeah, he's got the size to deter Omar from his one on one back to the basket moves, but. Omar is pretty crafty, Terry. I wouldn't be surprised to see him move his game out away from the bucket a little bit. Stephen Gray gives it off to Elias Harris. They don't get the shot off, and that's a cardinal sin, especially coming out of a timeout. Mark Few in his 11th season as the head coach has set the standard. There's no question about it. Number two in wins at Gonzaga, number two all-time in the West Coast Conference, and second in terms of active winning percentage in college basketball, right behind Roy Williams. Ben Allen, the transfer from Indiana, the up and under and over the 7-5 center, Foster. Ooh, man, that was a pretty fundamental move by Ben Allen. And who think young people, fundamentals are pretty, especially when they work. Harris can't get the roll, but the contact, and he'll go to the free throw line. Ben Allen picks up his second foul. Randy Bennett music absolutely turned things around here at St. Mary's. And now 3 and 17 against Gonzaga, but guess what? That's better than most in the West Coast Conference. Well, since the 2003-2004 season, Gonzaga has only lost six games in conference. Three of them are to St. Mary's. Yep, exactly. So they're, they're doing a fantastic job in terms of matching up and trying to get 
establish themselves as a power year in, year out. And they've got that Aussie connection still rolling. It started with Adam Caporn and Daniel Kickert who came in and then Patty Mills, obviously, but they just keep getting kids from down under and good ones. Della Vidova, the calling card, but Jordan Page also here, Mitchell Young on this roster too. Clint Steindl, who's now in the starting lineup the last couple of weeks. Well, if you, you talk to Omar Samhan about his Australian teammates, he says they speak a different language, even though it's supposed to be English. <laughs> they can talk amongst themselves, and their opposing team doesn't know what the heck they're saying. You know, it's that old Oscar Wilde uh, saying about uh, Great Britain and America, two great civilizations separated by a common language. <laughs> you have no idea what they're talking about. Omar Samhan, the miss. Here comes Harris. He'll be a tough matchup all season long, but especially tonight. And he'll go to the free throw line. Elias Harris is so athletic, so fast, and he's playing the power forward position, but you can see he has the ability to put it on the deck. So St. Mary's, whoever they come in and, and try to check up with him, they'll have their hands full. And he's really been aggressive, Terry, in the last five or six games. Harris with seven in the game already, drew the foul on the freshman. Another one from Australia, Mitchell Young, who's really come on for St. Mary's. Now remember, St. Mary's early on this season lost Wayne Hunter to a torn ACL. He just had surgery a week ago. He's out for the year. He hopes to come back with a medical red shirt, but he would be the guy tonight, the defender. He's their best perimeter defender. And if you match up with, say, Bolden, now you've got other guys trying to match up. Della Vidova, nothing but net beyond the arc. That's his second of the game. Terry, the floor spacing allowed Della Vidova that shot. Trying to stop Omar Samham from getting the ball in the paint. They spread it so well, they kick it to the wing. Della Vidova's wide open. Della Vidova with nine in the game. Bolden lets it fly. Two teams that like to get up and down, run, let it fly. And Matt Bolden, who averages 15 a game, bites the three. We're going to talk about him in depth a little bit later. But that, that handle that he has... Not looking down, handles the ball. I, I don't think there's anybody like him in college basketball that way. And that goes up with the shot from a reverse between the legs bounce to get some space. Watch, watch look here. He just he's sitting there toying <laughs> with with Young, who's six eight, six nine, doesn't want to get exposed on the perimeter. But he's looking elsewhere too as he takes that last hard bounce for rhythm on his jump shot, knowing that he's going up. Now down low on the block, kicks it out to Harris. Harris wise not to take that three. He's had a couple opportunities from there. It'll be much more effective around the bucket. Foster, the senior, plays inside out. Here's Gray, the pull up. That's a tough shot. And he got it over Mitchell Young, who's 6'9". Gonzaga 7 of 10 from the floor to start the game. Uh, Steven Gray, known for that pretty jumper of his, but that was over the outstretched hands of a 6'9 defender. So that's great concentration by Gray. Sandhan trying to pull Foster away from the basket, tipped up no, and Gonzaga clears. That's a tough assignment for Sandhan to try to score there in the lob and the dunk from Gray to Harris. How do you like that? And the timeout called to stop the run. When you have the combination of a great athlete and someone working hard like Elias Harris, this is the result right there. Getting behind the defense, Stephen Gray with the nice dime. And then before Stephen Gray up eight, gets over the defender and nothing but cotton. Gonzaga was prepared tonight, Terry, to come in here, and they have if they couldn't script it any better. So it's 21-13 Gonzaga with a 7-0 run in just 50 seconds. There's Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price. Rolls on here in Moraga, California, where St. Mary's has won 14 of their last 15 games. The only loss during that period to Gonzaga last February. The conference tip-off, the WCC conference schedule underway, and St. Mary's coming off a win over Santa Clara on Sunday, 80-72. Gonzaga beating Portland, 81-78. That's a bigger win than it, it sounds. You know, I'm not oh, sure yes. that many people know how good Portland is. Especially at home. Jared Stoll caught fire in the second half from three-point land. 
Ended up 6 of 10 from 3 for the game. High low. Sack right now trying to guard Sam Hand who gathers himself. Sack right held his ground. Made it difficult. That's exactly what you want to do as a big man. You don't mind if Omar scores because he averages 20 a game. He's going to do that. But as long as you can make him work for it and stay out of foul trouble. I say he's working for it. He's 0 for 4 so far tonight. There's the carry. And the second turnover giving the ball back to St. Mary's. Omar Samhan, bit of a struggle in the early going here. He had fun this afternoon, though. Strolling campus with Mr. Bardo. 30 seconds with Steven when we come back. This is 30 seconds with Steven. This week, Omar Samhan. What is it that you like so much about St. Mary's? Oh, man, I love everything about the school and just the environment. Uh, it's close to home, so I get to see my mom a lot. English class or science? Science. Science. What's your major? Communication. One word answer, okay? Gonzaga. I'm a beast. That's two words, but I'm a beast. <laughs> NCAA tournament. Gotta make it. Senior year. <sighs> Last chance. Here's your chance. Tell America what you want them to know. Get some popcorn, something good to drink, and sit down because St. Mary's is the real deal, and we're going to prove it. It's just impossible. One word answer. You can't give a one word answer. Why would you trap the man like that? Because I got to get it. I got to get it in 30 seconds. <laughs> no, that's good. I like that. 30 seconds on campus earlier today. And, well, you know, if, if they're for real, he's got something to prove now. He's on the bench right now getting a rest. He is 0 for 4 with one rebound. With those numbers from him, St. Mary's can't beat Gonzaga. I agree. They, they can't replace his offensive production. But right now, they're trying to get a little bit more continuity in their offense. They're running set plays to begin. Now it looks like they're going to a little bit of a motion. Try to free some of these other guys up like Della Vadova and McConnell for some outside shots. Young, size advantage over Goodson. Can't get it to go, though. You've got, for St. Mary's, a smaller lineup now. Jordan Page, the 6'1 freshman from Queensland, Australia, in for Samhan, who's 6'11". Oh, and, and Page is trying to guard Bull Kong right now, giving up at least five inches on the defensive end. So Gonzaga is so versatile offensively. Don't be surprised to see Kong go in the paint area. Harris, Young almost took it away. Elias gets it back, and McConnell with the rebound. Now you've got the small lineup out here in your St. Mary's off of misses. You better look to get out in transition. McConnell can shoot the three. There's no doubt about that. Mickey McConnell, a 53% shooter beyond the arc. Solid screen by Ben Allen despite two fouls. Laid some good wood on Goodson. Align McConnell for an open look. I like that. That's good. <laughs> Kong can shoot the three. Gives it off to Harris. Back to the basket, leaning in, and a traveling violation called. Goes back to St. Mary. Watch this right here. Ben Allen sets... Stay strong, clips Goodson just enough to give McConnell the open jump. And you're right, with two fouls, he could have been called on that. Easily. Yep. Easily. So St. Mary's going to have to be careful with how they platoon their big men. See Mitchell Young going back to the bench. He gave them good minutes. But Ben Allen, two fouls, and you don't want to get Sam Hannon in, in early foul trouble either. Kelly Olinick, the 6'11 freshman from D.C., Canada, one of three players on the Gonzaga roster from north of the border. So you've got Randy Bennett going down under and Mark Few going up north of the border. Cleared by Sacre. So it's 21-16, number 14 Gonzaga on the road here in Moraga taking on St. Mary's, the marquee premier rivalry in the West Coast Conference. Terry Gannon, Stephen Bardo. It's been the Zags in control so far as we're under the 10-minute mark in the first half. Sacre, the spin on Sam Hand, tipped up. No call on basket interference. They're going to count it. Well, Gonzaga doing a great job of attacking the offensive glass. Jordan Page to the left hand along the baseline, up and in. Playing the under-19 World Championships, as a number of these players from Australia did. There's the foul at the other end. I believe they're going to whistle McConnell. Last time down, you saw Sacre with a nice move, and watch Olenek. And Bull Kong. Let's see if there's any interference. Kong is on the rim. Yeah, that's that's offensive. He's got to wipe that off. Yeah, that's basket interference. It was McConnell's first and the team's fourth. 
the miss by Goodson, who's a 59% free throw shooter. Call goes to the bench. And they are up. Another freshman from Alberta, Canada, on the floor now for Mark Few. Dimitri Goodson has really struggled with his shots here. We saw him hit that wing jumper early, but has struggled from the free throw line. How about that? Last in the West Coast Conference. Still in the early going, but they're sub 70% from the free throw line. Which, if they don't correct it soon, will come back to haunt them. Goodson as, called on the hold. That's his second. As it almost did at Portland. You're right. Talking about Gonzaga's free throw shooting. Matt Bowden was the only one that was really solid, 10 of 11 from the line, but the rest of the team struggled and gave the Pilots extra opportunity. Yeah, in fact, Bowl Kong had a couple of free throws, which he missed with 4.6 seconds left, and Portland had a good look on that last possession. Well, if you're St. Mary's right now down five and your leading scorer at 20 points a game hasn't even scratched, you're sitting in pretty good position. Now Stephen Gray is going to guard Sam Hand, and we talked about him trying to alternate his game a little bit. Clear it for Della Vadova, gives it off to Allen. Why not recognize that mismatch? Gray pulls up. Offensive rebound up, no good, or up, missed it, and here comes Jordan Page. He can't get there. That was Sam Hand who threw it away. Great look. Or up the easy one inside the lane, and that was from Gray. Gonzaga can handle this pace a lot better than St. Mary's. Even though St. Mary's scores in the, in the mid-80s, this is a broken, athletic-type game with a lot of broken plays, a lot of players making decisions on their own outside of the offense. This style favors Gonzaga. Cross court to Page. Deep in the corner, he buys it. Jordan Page. The freshman only averages three points a game. And the foul at the other end. Gonzaga is the only of one of the two that's had opportunities in the open floor in transition. Got a couple of buckets. The lob dunk. Great pass from Bolden. And now they get the foul. The floor spacing once again allows St. Mary's to be so deadly from the three-point line. Shoots 41% as a team from three. And that means you're getting good looks, Terry. It's tough to shoot 41 from the three you're right. if you're constantly guarded. So that's great ball movement. First foul on Page, 15 foul. Sacre, the miss in the lane, gets it back. Fresh 35. For a team coming on the road against an upstart like St. Mary's and trying to establish themselves in the West Coast Conference at home, Gonzaga has done everything right, including dominate the offensive play. Rob that's a deuce foot was on the line but the fadeaway and since coming on he's had a good run for the Zags a six point lead Manny Arop at 6-5 Bo Kong at 6-6 six, six. they got great depth on the wing transition again taken right away by Paige Samhan ahead of the pack can he finish fouled hard to the deck and Omar having a few words Terry, that was a nasty foul. Mark Few arguing that. They're angry about it here in Moraga. And he did get shoved right into the post. Sort it out when we come back. The rivalry in the West Coast Conference the last few years, and the heat continues. The hard foul by Robert Sacre as Omar Samhan got ahead of the pack, and initially there was a signal, an intentional foul signal, but we get the word after they sort things out at the scores table that it is just called a regular foul on Sacre. So Samhan to the line, and Mark Few upset at first because he thought it was an intentional foul call. I think it was the right call. Uh, looking back at it on the replay, you saw there was no 
Sacker didn't mean to hurt Sam Ham at all. These are two big guys running full speed. And it looked a lot worse than it, than it actually was. So I think the officials got that one right. And he went up top. Yes. He was near the ball at least and, and making sure he didn't get the layup. He didn't undercut him at all. No, and the officials got it right, and it's good to see that. Omar kept his composure. Gonzaga players kept their composure. We keep playing. Tim Williams comes in for St. Mary's, the redshirt freshman from Antioch, California. He plays about eight minutes a game. Sacre gets a rest, and so does Samhan now. St. Mary's just eight of 23 in the game so far. Now, watch Olenek. Kelly Olenek from Gonzaga is an extremely skilled basketball player. Look for him to be more aggressive. Now, you got to be kidding me. How did he know you were talking about him? You, get, you hear your words, and he goes right to work. Hey, Kelly Olenek is 6'11". I'm going to go out on a limb. I think this guy can play the next level. Tipped, I seriously do. Tipped away by Gray. That's an early call by you, by the way. He's only a freshman. Clint Steindl, deep corner three, in and out. Tipped up by Williams. No. You see St. Mary's trying to get a lot of offensive tips instead of corralling the basketball, gathering themselves and going back up with some strength and authority. They've had a lot of opportunities at tips, but they haven't converted. Harris, the big step inside using his body and the foul. Yeah, how many different ways can this guy beat you? Elias Harris does his homework early, Terry. Look right there. Gets position, but well, as you mentioned, the nice step. Got a little European game there from Germany. 20-year-old freshman showing you that he's got some maturity that belies his freshman classification. All right, how about him? You going to go out on a limb with him, too? I don't think that's it on him <laughs> at all. Hey, that's a done deal. It's a done deal. Arap, the miss, gets it back, though. Followed his own shot. Sandhan got a piece of it. One of the all-time best at that, along with Diamond Simpson, who we played with the last few years here at St. Mary's, inside all alone, and finally he gets it up off the glass and in. Sam Hand was four in the game. Now, Terry, St. Mary's starting to get the game to their liking. They come down, they, they hot potato the basketball, one of the better passing teams in the nation. Bold and a bit of a force. He's been quiet on the offensive end, and the foul's going to go against Gonzaga. Harris picks up his first. Gives us a chance to remind you, men's college hoops presented by Five Hour Energy coming your way Saturday. Syracuse taking on West Virginia at noon for the Big East, and then the ACC number 18 Georgia Tech against the Heels, the number 13 team in the nation, but they did not look like that against Clemson. Little John Coliseum has made many a teams look like that. Oh, my God. It's like you're playing quicksand for some reason. I don't know what it is down there. Some places. It's a tough place to play. Yeah, you remember that very well, don't That's you? Right, right on top of you. You hear yep. every comment. But having said that, the heels just, I mean, they turned it over every other trip. Well, that's their Achilles heel like that. Dover for three behind the screen. You give him just an inch, and he can pull the trigger. Delvadova is a sneaky athlete, Terry. With his ability to shoot the three, it draws the defense, so it makes him so effective in the half court. Gray operates inside. There's the foul against McConnell, who came underneath and got him with the body. The second on Mickey McConnell. Delvadova, go back and look at that play again. Swing of the ball, comes off the screen, no hesitation on the three. But watch Stephen Gray's elevation. Look how high he you know gets. What? He actually got pushed by Sacre. Yep. McConnell got pushed in the back, and that's what took him underneath Gray. And anytime you fly the guy's waist area with your elbows out, it's, it should have an effect. Although Stephen Gray... He did a good job with the concentration there. Well, Sacre is 247 pounds, too, pushing 180-pound McConnell. Gray with seven in the game. Delavadova got just an eyelash of room again. Over Bolden. He's been perfect from three-point range. Well, you've seen they've gone to a double stack motion where they're bringing Delavadova off the screen down. Two-man game. Sacre gives it off to Gray underneath, and the lead is five again. This game could easily be in the 90s with this pace. Sam Hand fades away, didn't need to. Fought to get it back though. Again takes it away from the bucket and hits a little jump hook. <laughs> Omar 
It's not coming easy for him, but he's not going to quit. Young man has worked too hard to get to this position in his career. Hey, you get the feeling this one's just heating up. Oh, yeah. Ooh, calm the step back. Steinberg got a part. The Gales on the run. McConnell spotting up. And everyone sits down. <laughs> it's moving <laughs> <be> enough. <laughs> Bolden stops, pops, spies it. Matt Bolden. You know, you go the last five, six minutes, and he's been quiet, hasn't really looked to score, and he can do it in a hurry. Terry, people that we work with wonder why we love coming out west to do these games. I don't care. ACC, Big East, this is an electrifying atmosphere. When these teams are playing at this level, no better basketball in the country. Ben Allen on the over the back, and that's three on Allen. Big foul picked up with three and a half minutes or so before the break. Not many like him in college hoops. The threat, being able to pass off the move, shoot off the move, Bolden, doing what he does. Yeah, Ryan, the plot thickens there. Back here, Roni Turioff, former Zag, great. The NBA now in attendance, watching one of uh, what should be one of the top games all season long in the West Coast Conference. Stephen Curry also played on this floor, as a matter of fact. Yes, he did. Came in here. He and Patty Mills put quite a, quite a show on. And as he's doing now with the Golden State Warriors. You mentioned the big games in the West Coast Conference this year. You and I will be here for most of them. Uh, certainly whenever these two teams get together. St. Mary's and Gonzaga February 11th up in Spokane. But Portland against St. Mary's. Portland, Gonzaga, and then St. Mary's, Portland. Really the three top teams. In fact, if you look at the preseason predictions, it was Portland who were supposed to... Uh, they were predicted to come in second right behind the Zags. And may still do that. Yeah, a lot of people think Eric Revno has done an outstanding job putting that ball club together. Elias Harris gets loose underneath and makes it an eight-point game. Well, he's been the X-Factor, the one that St. Mary's has had a hard time matching up with. Taken away at the other end. He's just a next-level athlete. Had a chance to see Gonzaga against Illinois, Michigan State, Wake Forest. And he fits right in with those athletes at that level. He does not miss a beat. Della Vadova, a little one-handed runner in the way. Hong cleared it. Yeah, the schedule that they play, they do it every year, but it's just amazing. Taken away by Samhan. Ray, no foul ball on Young. Scramble and a hard one at that. They're going to break him up quickly. Possession arrow keeps it at this end with the Zags. I mean, you mentioned Michigan State, Wisconsin, Washington State. I'm down the list. The Wake Forest game. Illinois, your alma mater. Oh, that was a great game in overtime. Yeah, United Center, right? 20,000 Illini fans, and Gonzaga found a way to come out of there with a win. And in the preseason, I mentioned it, Portland. Getting two first place votes and 44 overall. Second behind the Zags. And the Zags have had a run of nine straight. And Portland had a great start to the year. Beating UCLA and Minnesota in the Anaheim Classic. And L how about LMU? Predicted to come in last going to Notre Dame earlier this year. Yeah, so West Coast Conference has had some interesting uh, wins in the pre-conference schedule. Conference tournament again this year at the Orleans Arena. Oh, Arena, excuse me, in shucks. Las Vegas. It was great last year, wasn't it? Oh, shit. We got to go back there. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad. They locked up an agreement for the next three years to play it there. But they did. They had great crowds, great atmosphere. It was a perfect place to play. I, I totally agree. I'm, I'd be surprised if other conferences in the west, western part of the country don't follow suit. Harris, that was a one-handed kind of jump hook from the free throw line. Young man's got some junk in his trunk there. Ah. He's got some, he's got game. Elias with 16 and six already. They're playing that big schedule early. Mark Few talking to him, he said the biggest challenge, one of the interesting challenges is they almost turn it over again and the foul called. Well, they're going to talk about it now. Uh, whistle Bolden with the foul, and that's his first. And they're shooting. That's a 17th foul. Well, people no, 16th know. 16th foul. Excuse me. People know of Detlef Shrimp. 
And Dirk Nowitzki, but you're gonna find, you're gonna hear about Elias Harris from Germany. That guy, he's got all kind of game. He Not does. quite Jesus Shuttlesworth, <laughs> but he's got game. Back to my point, though. I, the big, the, the different styles of officiating, it's still a challenge. I mean, they're, they're trying to make it uniform around the country. They've done a much better job of that. But to play a Big East team and Big East officials, it's officiated differently than if you play out here in the West Coast Conference. And, and when Gonzaga went into Michigan State and played them very, very strong, it was a war. Very physical nature, and so they have to adjust coming back to conference play. A 9-0 run. Remember that they had that 7-0 run in a span of 50 seconds earlier in the game. And now Bolden's layup makes it a 12-point lead. Steindl misses badly. So you're not getting the inside game from Samhan right now. And the last three or four trips, at least, the outside game has gone south. Well, the, the key to uh, Gonzaga in this lead right now has been their stellar defense, Terry. They built walls on the inside for Ben Allen, Young, and Sam Hand. Not fouling, but making them try to, to uh, finish over the top. And they've limited the open three looks that St. Mary's is accustomed to getting. Shot clock at two. Harris takes that step-through move. Here come the Gales. They'll set it up. About a 14-second difference. Shot clock, game clock. Delavadova spins to Williams, who lost it because he was fouled. Reminder, college game day driven by State Farm. Kicks it all off 10 a.m. Eastern time. And then Notre Dame taking on UConn. Should be a good one. UConn just, I mean, Gino Ariema. They're pretty, ridiculous. They are pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Saturday primetime presented by Direct TV. And game day from the site of the UConn game. Women's college basketball coming your way. Williams at the line. One and one. 17 foul. And so Harris clears the miss. And then about a one second difference. This first half has really shown how complete this Gonzaga ball club is. Great defense. They put 45 on the board. They pretty much stayed out of foul trouble. And they've limited Omar Samhan in the first half. Where is it here? To just three points. So outstanding defensive effort by Gonzaga. Bolden on the move. Didn't not get it off. There was enough of a difference. Shot clock to game clock, and there's .9 left now on the game clock. And a nice screen and roll action. Bolden just a little late. Trying to get that off, but right idea. So many times, Terry, shot clock running down. We see a guy going for a desperation three. He's trying to get to the bucket. Now they put 1.7 back on the clock. Delavadova, who knows, he might hit this. No, nope, not this time. St. Mary's held scoreless the last four and a half minutes. Gonzaga closes on a 9-0 run. And Elias Harris leading the way. 16 points and eight rebounds. 45-33 Gonzaga as we send it to Ryan Burr, the UPS Halftime Report. Gonzaga has won four in a row in this rivalry, 24 of the last 27. As we welcome you back to Moraga in Thursday Night Showcase, presented by T. Rowe Price, part of conference tip-off. And if St. Mary's doesn't find some answers quickly, they'll make it five in a row, Gonzaga will. Terry Gannon back with Stephen Bardo. The Zags shoot 59% in the first half, and they hold St. Mary's to just 34% from the floor. St. Mary's got to find something. It would start with Omar Samhan. Yeah, Omar really struggled inside, and Robert Sacker did a great job of building a wall and not fouling. See right here, they get in the passing lanes. Nice steal. 
They're forcing the drive and not letting St. Mary's set up for open threes. And just really shutting down the paint. You see the drives are contested. They're making them pass out, doing a good job defensively. Omar right there, Zachary building that wall, no fouling, making him finish over the top. Right there, he had a, a, a pretty good look but couldn't finish. But this seemed to get him going, Terry. The hard foul by Sacre. And Shanahan came back with a block. Shot to start the run, then got it going inside a little bit. But still, if you look at the halftime numbers, he's just two of nine. Six points and six rebounds so far. This is how St. Mary's is going to get back in the game. The, the ball will end up right here after a pass to Sam Han, after Sam Han cuts to the basket. Clear space for St. Mary's. This is the floor spacing tear they're going to have to have in order to come back in this game. And it was a good look because Stephen Gray late getting out on the shooter because he was concerned about Sam Han helping out with Sam Han inside in the paint. But we didn't see a whole lot of that during the first half from St. Mary's. We've got Robert Sacre and at times Will Foster at 7-5 in there defending Omar Samhan. So it's been effective so far. And at the other end, too much Elias Harris, the freshman from Germany, who had 16 points, nine rebounds in the first half. And Matt Bolden, who ended up with eight in the half. Most points that St. Mary's has given up in a half all season long, but they start with the basketball to open up the second half. Swinging around Clint Steindl in the corner. Looking for Omar Samhan. There is that one-on-one. -on -one. Look down low to Della Vadova, and they're going to call the foul on Harris, stepping in a bit late. I mentioned 34 percent the first half for St. Mary's. Della Vadova, though, not a part of the struggles. He was perfect beyond the arc. Harris was terrific for Gonzaga. Yeah, Harris scored from outside, from inside. He ran the floor, got behind the defense for an alley-oop dunk. He really puts constant pressure on St. Mary's with his ability to run the floor and his creativity in the half court set. When they have that mismatch, Gray trying to stop Sam Han inside, he fronts him entirely. He keeps the basketball from getting there. Sack right now, one on one with Omar. Takes his time, there's the fadeaway, got hit a little bit, no call. And the Zags come up with it. Well, once again, good defense by Sack Ray. Really has studied film very well on the moves that. Omar Samhan likes to do. They're not letting him get into the paint area. A couple of blocks, a couple of steals in the first half. The Zags have held six opponents under 40% from the floor. Samhan, there's Gray on that denial, but they throw over the top and one. Gonzaga seems to be uh, switching Terry regardless of who's in the pick and roll. So Zachary ends up on Della Vadova, but Omar Samhan keeps it high. Good fundamentals. Doesn't bring it down to the guard's level. Keeps it high, and he has an and one opportunity. Called the foul over the top on Stephen Gray. So that's three on Gray, who was very effective in the first half. And they cut the lead to single digits. So St. Mary's has, has done a, a much better job of committing to getting the ball to Omar Samhan, whether he's in position or not, because he's smart enough to either score or make the right pass. Sack Ray fades on Ben Allen. Good shot from Lane from Sacre, who I think you talk to scouts, he's got a future on the next one. Oh, there's no question about it. Huge body, and he's just now getting into the waiting room. Sandhan gets loose behind the defense, another bucket. So a positive start to the second half for Omar. And Omar Sandhan trying to check Elias Harris right now. That's a mismatch. How about that look from Bolden down low? Old fashioned screen and roll. Mr. Stockton would like that one. Oh, they, they would love that Stockton Malone hookup. Harris has 18 in the game. The double on Sam Han. He goes through it, though. The fadeaway, you know, in the locker room, Randy Bennett said, Omar, you got to go to work. You got to be our guy. If they have any chance, he's got to go to work. Like Matt Bolden with the now you see me, now you don't at the hole. Hesitation move from Bolden to answer at the other end. He's in double figures. But St. Mary's is not going to be able to trade Bassett with the Gonzaga. They've got to at some point come up with some stops. That's a good no call on the flop from Sacre. And Sam Han with 15 in the game. He had six at the break. Reach called on Clint Steindl. 
Well, Omar may have gotten his manhood challenge, so he's coming out here and putting it on the line, knowing that, as you said, Terry, if he doesn't heat up soon, they have no chance. And the fifth-year senior showing you some moxie right here, taking a little contact and able to finish. And Rick Batzel, JTR, and there's the lob dunk, the second one that we have seen. Oh, hoo, hoo. Bitter beer face poster. <laughs> Talk about your marble, whatever you want to call it. Oh, climb the ladder, Aliyah's Harris. Second time we've seen that from Harris tonight. Delavadova, tough fadeaway. Sacre, the block as the Zags take it right back. Phil Benson off the bench now. They don't use him much for St. Mary. Holding foot on the line, in and out. St. Mary's got, they've got to score quickly in the ha in the uh, break situation, Terry. They're just having a tough time scoring every time down when Gonzaga set defensively. Dimitri Goodson just picked up his third, trying to fight around the screen. So he's got three and Gray has three. Terry, look at this. Climb the ladder. Look out below. Elias Harris. He, he's shown everything. He's blocked shots. He's shot the gap for steals. He's run the floor, got an alley-oop. He did a jump hook in the lane from 12 feet earlier in the first half. He's shown us everything. It might have been a 15-footer in the first half. Now he tips it away, gets the steal. And look at him run the floor, putting pressure on the defense. Bold and out of control. And the offensive foul called on Matt Bolden is second. Well, Bolden likes the pace right now, trying to make things happen. And good job by St. Mary's closing down the gap. Nowhere to go for Bolden. Who's a two time first team all conference performer. And Mark Few said it was an adjustment early in the year for the young guys playing with him. When passes are coming from different spots that you don't expect them to come from, you've got to make yourself aware of that. That's right. Keep your hands up so you don't get hit upside the head. Sam had the follow. What a huge second half he's had. Moves into the top five all time on the scoring list here at St. Mary's. I like St. Mary's commitment to get into the paint area. They're not selling for three. Sacre, the jump hook under control the entire time in the paint. And a double digit lead again. Well, if you like offense, you tune into the right game. Back and forth. Tremendous offensive display on both ends. Foul called on the defense. <laughs> Coming back with Stephen Bardo, starting five in the West Coast Conference. Who are the best five out west? Find out in a moment. Suns, Hawks, and Magic Blazers, tomorrow on ESPN. Wow! That's a low price! Wow! That's a low price. I think I'll get him a cart. Wow. Staples has low prices on everything you need for your office. Staples, that was easy. Introducing the all-new Lexus GX. Welcome back to Moraga, California, as we take a look at the best five in the West Coast Conference. Matt Bolden of Gonzaga. T.J. Campbell, the diminutive guard for Portland, had a great Anaheim tournament, Terry, shooting the three. Dior Lohorn, 6'5", but built like a tank. Mr. Production for San Francisco, and we've seen Elias Harris here in the game and what he can do. And last but not least, the big fellow who's got a slow start but has picked it up here, Omar Samhan of St. Mary. And Omar Samhan has outscored Gonzaga all by himself here in the second half. He's got all 11 of the St. Mary's points, but it's still a double-digit lead for the Zags. Well, you got to pick your poison against Gonzaga because you can't shut all these scores down. Sacre, when he's scoring in the paint, averaging almost 12 points a game, you have to pay attention to him. Bolden Gray, 
Just tough matchup. Mickey McConnell buys the three. He was the man who inbounded the basketball, got it right back, and he makes it an eight point game. Harris, by the way, has Gonzaga's only two double doubles this year, and he's one rebound away from his third. Gray with the long miss. Sandhan runs it down. You get a sense that this is St. Mary's time to maybe make a run right now. Yeah, they need to close the gap because. Oh, man. They call the offensive oh. foul on the moving screen. Omar Samhan. That's his first. A lot of times, Terry, this is the guard's fault. Yeah. Because you don't give the big man a chance to set up. Matthew Delvadova, a freshman, he's got a high motor as it is, but he's got to learn to take that beat set up for his big man so he doesn't pick up an offensive foul. All the contact, I'm not sure that was uh, one that you blow the whistle on. But I agree with you. They do. Will Foster in. The spin and the fadeaway. Don't see that from him very often. Tipped out, it'll be St. Mary's basketball. Nice move by yeah. Foster. Keeping Ben Allen honest defensively. As you said, Foster more of a defensive presence for this height. And St. Mary's just has a thing with their hair, don't they? <laughs> Golden, Foster, Stephen Gray. What do you mean, Gonzaga? What I say, St. Mary's? Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, Omar Sandhan has had a thing with his hair. He's got about <laughs> 10 different hairstyles. There. You're right. The floppy hair. And there's a whistle against St. Mary's away from the ball. And men's college basketball action coming your way Saturday ESPN four top 25 teams number five Syracuse against number nine West Virginia at noon and then Georgia Tech and North Carolina at two o'clock Eastern men's college Hoops presented by five hour energy Jim Beheim Syracuse club playing great defense with their zone yeah you see Bolden doing what he does I mean that again we saw it in the first half that last hard bounce while he's looking away and the defender never catches on he never catch on because he lulls you to sleep yep. he's so good off the bounce he's so good passing the basketball you just have to start grabbing his shorts and talking about relatives or something he's got 12 in the game Ben Allen set shot from the deep corner Kong with a rebound this is where he's dangerous right there setting up his teammates quickly in the offensive set Harris tipped up by Foster and good. Well, Leas Harris just put so much pressure on the defense that Foster's able to come in and sneak in with that deuce. And tips it away from behind. Starts the break to Gray. Steven floats in, followed up by Elias Harris. Doing everything for the Zags tonight. He's got a double-double. It's a 14-point lead. Mark Few loves it. Randy Bennett wants to talk things over. Well, watch Matt Bolden. Now you see me. Now you see the jumper in your mug. And then the big fella, Will Foster, at seven foot five, cleaning up the mess for Gonzaga. It's been a dominant decade, 11 years to be exact, for Mark Few at Gonzaga. They lead here by 14, but you know, think about what they're trying to accomplish. Their 10th straight regular season title. They're tied for fourth all time. UCLA with that great run during their heyday, 13 straight Pac-10 titles. But uh, to have nine straight just own a conference like this. But just to be in the company of those yeah. great programs is amazing. And any people may say, well, it's the West Coast Conference. It doesn't matter if it's the church conference. That you're right. That's consistency. That would be CYO. Okay, CYO. All right, All right. Yeah. there you go. And they're getting everybody's best shot. And they're still successful. Bolden on the move. McConnell, a late call. And Mickey McConnell with his third foul. Late, but called nonetheless. Now today, primetime presented by Direct TV Women's College Hoops. Number three, Notre Dame taking on number one, UConn. All kicks off with college game day at 10 a.m. Eastern time. The game from that site at 9 o'clock Eastern. And Bolden with the miss. And UConn 16 and 0, and really not being challenged right now. No, and 
I can't see many teams being able to get into the depth of Connecticut. They've got some great floor players, more and the like, but they've got players on the bench <laughs> that could be all conference for every other team in the, in the country. Jordan Page with a three ball. So it's an 11-point lead for Gonzaga. Now, I've, I've been doing the WNBA for a number of years. It seems like every roster you say, oh, they've got four players from UConn playing professional basketball. St. Mary's 8 of 17 beyond the arc. Bolden, but they've been playing catch up the entire game. Bolden can take you inside and use his body, too. So it's 63-50. Gonzaga over St. Mary's, top two teams in the West Coast Conference. There's a nice showcase presented by T. Rowe Price. Terry Gannon along with Stephen Bardo. Always great to make the trip here to Moraga, especially when the Zags are in town. Crowd wanting a run by the Gales, but Mitchell Young kicks it out of bounds. Judge of the top five players, how about the team? Bardo's best in the West when we come back to the Bay Area, Northern California. St. Mary's cheerleaders, St. Mary's fans looking for a run from the Gales here in the last 11.45. It's a 13-point lead for Gonzaga. How about Bardo's best in the West? You got the gunslinger thing look there. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I like that. So the Zags are number one. You got BYU over St. Mary's, even though St. Mary's beat Utah State. Utah State beat BYU. And BYU's been top 25 this year. Okay. And St. Mary's is not. Good answer. How about Oregon getting smacked by Arizona State tonight? You've got them in the top 10. You know what that is? That's Pac-10. That's the Pac-10 this year. Yeah. So they're going to be, they're going to change every week because the Pac-10 is down so much. But Northern Colorado, tip our hats to them. They view in Bartles best in the West. 15-3 and three on the season. Narrow loss at Oklahoma. They're for real this year. Northern Colorado out west. I, okay, all right. Technically. Big West. I know, yeah, technically. Borderline, but. Yeah, how about that? Uh, you know, you, you think about the Pac-10, maybe a two-team league this year. It's going to open up some spots for maybe an A-10 to get a number of teams in there. A-10, the Mountain West, I think, would probably be recipients of that as well. Yeah, the A-10's been impressive so far in their non-conference games and now into conference play. And how about the West Coast Conference? A couple of years ago, it was a three-team league. This year? Well, it's going to be tough. Portland and St. Mary's are going to have to win one game at least against this Gonzaga ball club. Gonzaga will have a, a high RPI, but as they go through the conference, St. Mary's and Portland's RPI won't be as strong. Well, Portland's already lost to Gonzaga. St. Right. Mary's better. They're down by 15 in right. the second half, so they better hurry. Yeah, and, and to try to go to Spokane and right. beat Gonzaga, that's a tall order. You think without that calling card win, it's often difficult to get that respect. Yeah, because Gonzaga plays anybody all the time, but St. Mary's has a hard time scheduling top tier opponents because they're very difficult to play against especially here in their home court. people don't want to come here and play them right you have to tip your hat to Kevin Stallings and Vanderbilt that snuck out of here with a two-point win earlier this year Sacre underneath and he'll have a chance for the three-point play just when St. Mary's gets a chance they feel like they're getting some momentum Gonzaga gets the ball in the paint Robert Sacre showing you his work in the weight room during his young career. Mitchell Young second and the sixth team foul on St. Mary's, so Gonzaga shooting the rest of the way. Five team fouls on the Zags. Well, and that's so big when you're on the road with your Gonzaga that you can get into a penalty situation early in the second half. Put so much pressure on the defense. Young, tough pass, run down by Page. Jordan Page is having an outstanding ball game. He needs to be a little bit more aggressive. Five on the shot clock. McConnell's got to float it up there. Tipped up, kept alive. Sanhan fights his way to the rebound, throws it off a of Sacre. And then Omar Sanhan is urging his teammates, get me the ball. And why not? 20 and 10, leading score and rebound in the conference. He's got to get some touches. 
He had a mismatch the last time down as they made that switch and Page couldn't get him the basketball. And Terry, he shoots almost 57% from the field. It's not like he takes bad shots. He's an efficient big man. He'll make the right play to get him the basketball. Harris just moved him out of the lane that time. Wouldn't allow him to get the ball. Page underneath. Allen with a reverse with the left hand up and good. What a pass by Jordan Page. Offhand along the baseline, away from the defense. Jordan Page has been a huge spark for St. Mary's off the bench. Defensively, though, St. Mary's has not had an answer for Elias Harris. And when they have needed a stop, they haven't been able to get it. Here he goes to work again, and he gets the bucket off the wrong foot, off the glass, and in. 24 in the game for Harris. Well, the fans want to travel, but I don't think they're going to get it. Della Vadova, short jumper. Gets him right back at you. Dimitri stepped down the baseline, turned it over, and that's been the problem with him, that assist-to-turnover ratio this year. Yeah, he's trying a little bit too hard. Let's take a look at that last play. Where, look at this pass right there. Offhand, Terry, around the defense along the baseline. Jordan Page earning himself a little bit more playing time with his performance. UCLA cut. McConnell found him underneath from Allen. Nice pass. Get the, as you mentioned, Terry, start to get the feeling St. Mary's has slowed Gonzaga down a little bit. Good denial by Della Vadova. The ball for Bolden. Five counts. Just didn't pay attention. And it turns over back to St. Mary's. See if St. Mary's will go back to another set play. Two bigs at the elbows. A little UCLA rub action. Allen threw it away. Tenth turnover by the Gales. Ben Allen's got to be careful. He's guarding Elias Harris. With... Harris the miss. Della Vadova has had a quiet second half. Two points so far. Up to Samhan. And the foul. The lead is down to single digits. One of the few times all evening Omar Samhan was able to beat the defense down the floor. And Matt, Matthew Delavadova showing you that his game is more mature than his freshman classification as well. Third foul on Matt Bolden. And it's as loud in here as we've heard it since the tip. Timeout on the floor. Omar's been huge in the second half when they've gotten him the basketball. Wyatt in the first, but he's led this run to get them within nine. So, Terry, as we look at it right now, if Sam Ann hits this free throw, they're down eight. Plenty of time in this game. And I'm surprised we haven't seen a zone from St. Mary. There's, there's no one that St. Mary has that can match up with Harris. Gonzaga understands that. They've gone to him the last couple times down the floor. Let's see if they were able to make an adjustment to slow him down. Another reminder about the men's college hoops presented by Five Hour Energy coming your way Saturday. Syracuse and West Virginia, then Georgia Tech and North Carolina as we are well into our conference schedule now. Big East ACC action, noon Eastern, 2 o'clock Eastern time. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Omar Sandman, 13 points, 5 rebounds in the second half. And not make it a three-point play. So it's still a nine-point lead for the number 14 team in the nation. Just close as St. Mary's has gotten in the second half. See what Mark Few set up during the timeout. Not that. Uh, Terry, I'm they, like you. They called a foul on Matt Bolden? No, they called it on Elias Harris. Doing what? Sticking his body out trying to get a piece of the defender. I'm like you. Uh, there's a lot of contact in this game, and we've seen a couple calls out away from the basket. 
Wow, that's a tough break for Gonzaga. Third foul on Elias Harris. You saw that number a moment ago. The graphic 38 and 3 at home. They're tough to beat here. Gets the roll off the drive. Oh, Della Dover with that mouthpiece and that floppy hair resembles a Geico commercial. A caveman can do it. But he is getting it done inside. I was thinking Pistol Pete Maravich, but okay. <laughs> Goodson can't get it to go. It's tipped up and in. Stephen Gray with 11 in the game. And it stopped an 8-0 St. Mary's run. Wow, nice pick by Sam Hand. But good recovery on the defensive end by Gonzaga. Good ball movement. Sam Hand's got the one-on-one -on -one matchup now. There's the fadeaway. Didn't use the glass this time. Omar with 21. Well, if they don't double-team him, Terry, and he has the time to get to his sweet spot, he'll knock it down every time. Are you kidding me, Elias Harris? Are you kidding me? Now he steps out 22 feet from the basket. He's got 27. I'm just surprised they don't double team him or play zone. Sam Hand to follow this game. The pace, the intensity is picked up. And I still think this favors Gonzaga. Ball tipped out and stays with his axe. Roll call set to check in. When we come back. Matthew Delavadova from down under, working in the lane, bringing back the Gales along with Omar Samhan, who's had a huge second half. Good one in the WCC. The Gales within striking range now in the second half. Stay with us. ESPN's exclusive. St. Mary's with a run back to within eight of number 14, Gonzaga. Omar Samhan was two of nine at halftime. He's now 10 of 19, so he's eight of 10 in the second half, Stephen. Boy, he's getting the ball in better position. His teammates are committed to getting the rock, but yet he's taking his time. He, he's not feeling the double team, so he's taking his time and getting to where he wants to be on the floor. And just showing you the hard work and the determination of a young man has come a long way in his career here at St. Mary. 23 points, 11 rebounds for the leading scorer and rebounder in the conference. You're right. I mean, we've watched him since he was a freshman. I mean, where he is now compared to where he was when he came in, he's changed his body. He's gotten in shape, not only changing his hairstyle every year, <laughs> and his game has gotten better and better. Zags with the basketball thrown away. Allen takes it away. Up to Page. Hong's up there. Made it a tough shot. Yeah, he tried to get a little fancy there, but... Gray comes right back and makes it pay. That's a four-point play right there. Four-point play is when you're trying to get young people to understand that, that possession is critical when you're trying to close the gap. Yep. Tipped out at St. Mary's basketball. Take a look and see Jordan Page trying to go hit the side of the backboard there. Lost the, lost the handle going up. So tough break for Jordan Page. They call the timeout. So Randy Bennett has his team down by 10 now with under six minutes to go. Matt Bolden in this game. A little quiet. Wyatt in the first half didn't look to score all that much, but in spurts tonight, it's really turned it on. Yeah, he's done a really good job, and that was just an unbelievable pass through traffic. One hand to start the game, and then the now you see me, now you don't hesitation. And Terry, he can move that 220-pound frame of his. He looks big, he looks solid, and he is, but he's so efficient with his play. Now, here's a guy, I think, there aren't many guys in college basketball where the ball is an extension of their hand. Looks to be connected to his hand. Has great vision, makes passes before the play actually develops and sometimes catches his teammates unaware because of that. And great awareness of where people are on the court at all times. I mean, I, think, I don't think there are many who combine all that in college hoops. Ben Allen off the out-of-bounds with a deuce, and it's 76-68. Terry, I totally agree with you. And... Not many guys in the country at 6'5". You can that, do that. You're that, right. That can do that. You, you're, we're used to seeing guys at the 
Six foot rain, six foot one rain. And I brought up a name a moment ago, Pistol Pete Maravich. I'm not going to compare him to Pistol Pete or Ernie DiGregorio back in the day, and young kids have no clue who that is. But <laughs> when you watch them play, it was as if the ball never left their hand, even though it did. I get the same feeling sometimes with him on the floor. And so do the opposing players from Matt Bolden, because you notice nobody reaches. They never try to steal the ball from him. They always try to play position defense. That's a good point. Because he's so good with the rock. Tipped out. St. Mary's ball. The Mark Fuse Club has been able to keep St. Mary's at a distance, if you want to call eight points. A I mean, Randy Bennett's club not able, even though they have put together runs in the second half, to close the deal. Well, and they've had some turnovers they had some missed shots and a beautiful pass by Bella the goal Sandhan using his body inside it's a six-point game they're on their feet Lost start in college basketball simple post speed Matthew Delvadova showing you that it can be done Sacre followed by Harris again playing above the rim Ooh. Shut it down, big fella. Career high 29 for Elias. Bolden fouled. No, he got all balls in McConnell. Now the foul in the corner is going to go against Gonzaga. Bolden got hit, Terry. That was a foul. I, I saw nothing but. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I thought Mickey McConnell was trying, trying to, foul to foul him. Yes. That was nothing but arm. Nice job by Sam Ham on the position. Right there with the empty, no help on the backside, but that young man right there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All you could do is kind of chuckle. Because oh. it doesn't, I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh. He he's, just picked up his fourth foul, though. Yeah, and he's clearing the place out. People, they're going to stop jumping when he's in the neighborhood. Because you just don't want to be on that poster. <laughs> right. Oh. oh my goodness. Watch him climb the ladder once again. You've got to keep a body on him. Liz Harris, the hammer. Della Vadova with the free throws. He's got 21 in the game. And again, a two possession ball game. Listen to this place. And look who's going to take over the game. The silencer. Every time Gonzaga needs a big hoop, when St. Mary's is making a run, you know where it's going. Bolden with 18, 7 of 11. Efficient game for him. McConnell, though, beat him down to the block. Second time that's happened on that UCLA type cut. Yeah, Gonzaga, has, they fall asleep at the end of that cut. But St. Mary's has committed themselves to throwing that ball in there, and they've been successful at it. Harris has 29 in the game. Forget that. He's got 31. <laughs> Just a freshman. Played on the senior national team in Germany. 20 years of age. He's mature for a freshman. What a performance tonight. Well, he knows his team needs every one of these as well. Because St. Mary's not done yet. Sam Hand can't get the roll. He'll go to the free throw line, though. Zach Ray the foul, that's his third. Well, Elias Harris is having a coming out party in the WCC with that jumper right there. Back in Moraga and conference play has returned in the thick of things. Randy Bennett, Mark Few, their squads going at it for the full game from tap to buzzer here. Elias Harris just giving us a number of images to remember in this game, Mr. Bardo. <laughs> I can, all I can do is shake my head over here, Terry. Unbelievable performance by Gonzaga and Elias Harris. Harris, a career-high 31 in the game. Matthew Delavadova tying a career-high with 21 for St. Mary's. And Stephen Gray, 12 rebounds in the game. That's a career-high for him, but it's uh, number 15, Matt Bolden, who's taken over to run the show down the stretch. And you and I were chatting in the break. It's one of the benefits of playing so many tough non-conference games to start the season. They've had an answer every time St. Mary's has had a run. Exactly right, Terry. And 
most teams St. Mary's would be able to close this gap against the way they played in the second half done a tremendous job of getting the ball to their man Omar Samhan but Gonzaga just so loaded and so talented and they're battle tested as you mentioned Samhan a 77 percent free throw shooter he's got 20 points in the half 27 for the game now if I'm Randy Bennett head coach of St. Mary's I give Gonzaga a different look right now. I double team Matt Bowling if he gets the basketball. I throw a zone at him or something. But Gonzaga's in an unbelievable rhythm in the half court. They're in the straight man to man. The Gales are. Sam had matched up with Harris. Now the switch to Bolden trying to stay with him is difficult. Omar takes it away though. Can you believe Omar Samhan scored? Like, uh, at will in the second half, and now he's guarding Harris. That's a bad shot. Yeah, tough shot. That was a two. It wasn't a three, and that was a quick shot off the bounce. Omar Samhan being asked to guard Elias Harris right now. I know Matt Bolton has a basketball, but I'd go to Elias Harris if I'm Gonzaga. You start to run some blockers at too early. Well, they're being patient in the half court set, so it looks like they're getting down right now. 10 seconds in the shot clock. Harris blocked by Samhan. They get it back. Remember the shot clock not reset. Under five. Sacre the easy lay in right by Ben Allen. Well, that's a disciplined club. Not selling for a rush shot. Sacre puts his head down and gets all the way to the bucket. Harris with the four fouls on Samhan. Up and under, Omar goes. And it's a six-point game again. Well, Harris might be unstoppable on this end, but with four fouls, there's nothing he can really do one-on-one -on -one with Samhan. But at some point, St. Mary's has got to come up with some stops. Bolden splits the double, goes right past. Harris tips, no good. Scramble, Kong comes up with it, and a fresh 35 for Gonzaga. Now, remember, the Zags have not been a terrific free throw shooting team. 67%. And they're not going to start fouling now with a minute 23, but you're almost at that point where you might as well. And they can prove that they can beat at the line. Because they haven't been able to stop them in a the half-court set, and when Gonzaga doesn't score, they get the rebound. Holding the miss. Sacre, a big offensive rebound. The foul on the floor before the shot. Omar Sanhan whistled for that. Zachary, a 66% free throw shooter. That's the seventh team foul on St. Mary's, so they'll shoot the rest of the way. You think these guys aren't playing hard? Look at Zachary and the guys bending over, grabbing their shorts with this battle they've had here tonight. Zachary, 0 for 1 tonight from the line. 0 for 2, that's a big miss. Terry, you might have the strategy. I'm not sure that St. Mary's is going to use it, though. Dangerous pass. They take it away. Samhan gets it back. That is just sheer will from Omar Samhan. He's got 31. Bo Kong had the ball in his hands, Terry, and Omar would not be denied. How about that look from Samhan? Right here, looked like it was a bad possession. Omar does not quit on the play. Gets it right back and puts it in. That's why you like 50 or seniors on your ball clubs here. If they're really competitive, they'll do whatever they have to do to try to come up with a victory. Sports Nation coming up next, but we're not done yet. 58.5 left in the game and a four-point lead for Gonzaga. What do you do now defensively if you're Randy Bennett? I may look at the free throw percentages of some of the players at Gonzaga. If when you look at it on the floor, let's see who Gonzaga has coming out. Bolden is probably their best free throw. Yes, their best free throw shooter, 86%. But if Stephen Gray gets it, he's an 80% free throw shooter, but he struggles in the last five minutes, Terry. So it's not a bad thought if you don't get a steal right away because the most you can give up is two. It's a two possession game then anyway. Seven of 15 tonight. The Zags out from the free throw line. 
They don't get the steal, make it difficult bringing the ball up, though. But it looked like they were trying to foul Stephen Gray. Jordan Page was. Oh, that's a five count. That's a five count. Be careful. They called the reach at the end on Delavadova. Terry, that was awfully close. Let's take a look here. Now he starts to count one, two, three. Yeah, it was close. And it, it, in terms of when the officials started the count, it's correct. Yep. 86%. One and one. He missed it. Two straight misses on the front end of one and one. McConnell kicks it out. Page for three. Shot clock is off, and now you've got to go after it. Great box out by Robert Sacre on Omar Samhan. Omar was on the opposite side of the shot, had great position. And Sacre comes out of nowhere to knock Omar out of position. Now, I'm not going to second guess the kick out to the corner. Page had the open look. But you don't need a three right there. Great you call. had Omar Sanhan underneath the basket. Well, Mick McConnell drives in, sucks the defense in. And you're asking a lot of that young man, but look at that box out by Robert Sacre. Holden just two of five, three of six now. That's a big one. Next one. Very large. Well, we thought they might get into the 90s, and it's slowed down a little bit here due to the closeness and the seriousness of the game at this point. Still a two-possession game, though. A couple of threes away, the Gales are. Take a look at Del Vadova's reaction right there. Yeah, he thought he drew a charge. Screen by Samhan trying to free up McConnell. Gives it back in a tough spot. What's he going to do with it there? McConnell, long three. Steindl scrambles. And the foul called on the Gales. With 11.9 left in the game. Very good defense in the half court set by Gonzaga. Knowing that St. Mary's was looking for the three. Allowed McConnell to get inside. But closed down to the shooters. Now you've got the double bonus situation. Two shots for Stephen Gray. Oh for one. There's not many weaknesses on this Gonzaga ball club. But this may come back to bite them at some point, Terry. Their free throw shooting has not been stellar in the last five minutes of their game. And now it's uh, no longer a two possession game. With that last free throw, Della Vadova races up the floor, and that's what you want. And a quick timeout with 6.5 left. It's a five-point lead for Gonzaga. I think you're right, though. You look at, uh, you know, in, you're going to be in tight games down the stretch, critical spots, and that's when you you got to have the free throw shooting, and they have not come through. They gave St. Mary's some chances in that game, this game that they should not or probably wouldn't have most of the time. So the Zags on a road trip here and then down at San Diego before Pepperdine and Loyola Marymount come to Spokane. Yeah, and then you look at, at Santa Clara, at San Francisco, and at, and, and at home versus Portland. Santa Clara plays pretty well down there, so that'd be a, a, a tough challenge for them, but this was definitely going to be the toughest for them looking at the season. Over 19,000 miles logged already when you consider this road trip. To Moraga and then down to Southern California and they've got a, a trip to Memphis yep for the Memphis Tigers who are playing a lot better than people expected with the loss of their coach and also some of the players that have graduated so 6.5 left and miracles yes do happen but uh, it'd be difficult at this point <clears throat> for Randy Bennett's club St. Mary's on the other hand that lost to Vanderbilt early in the year here at home. They're 15 and 2 right now. If they lose this 15 and 3, they got Portland on Saturday, and that's no easy game. Right. Portland, and then of course, you see the rest of 
of the slate there. And you look at this Portland team that's coming in. We talked about them preseason picked ahead of St. Mary's. So they'll, they'll have some incentive to come in here and play well. They look for the steal off the out of bounds and then the quick foul. So they don't get the steal, they got a foul. McConnell saying, hey, call it. And Matt Bolden to the free throw line. I know, once again, Terry, you talked about it earlier. This is why Mark Few will go anywhere, anytime, any place. Yep. Because young people tend to look at the record of a team. They don't understand that they're going to get everyone's game of the year in this conference. And I don't care. You go to LMU that got a win against a Big East Notre Dame team early in the year. You talk about going to San Diego, who Bill Greer coached with this Gonzaga program for 18 years. So if there's anybody that knows the Gonzaga way, it's San Diego. So anytime they go on the road or at home in West Coast Conference play, they get a great you shot. You play all those teams right there. You had Illinois in the United Center. Great atmosphere there. Then you've got Portland. You just had to go to Portland to survive there. You come on the road to St. Mary's and you survive. I mean, they move to 13 and 3. And I think Mark Few, with all the new faces on his roster, not only would be pleased if you told him this before this season, he might be a bit surprised. Yes, definitely. And the way that they control the game, never relinquishing the lead on the road, outstanding performance by the Zags. So they have now won five in a row against St. Mary's, 25 of the last 28. And Elias Harris, just a huge game for the Zags. 89-82, your final score here in Moraga. Coming up next, Sports Nation, presented by Toyota for Stephen Bardo and our entire crew. I'm Terry Gannon. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night, everybody, from the Bay Area here in Northern California.